meiotic recombination. Another process that occurs during meiosis and generates genetic diversity and variation is recombination between chromosomes. Let's look at what's going on. Let's visualize the chromosomes in this cell. Before the beginning of meiosis, or mitosis for that, that matter, each chromosome would have replicated to form two sister chromatids, the old name for replicated chromosome. If this were mitosis, each daughter would get one copy of each chromosome, both paternal and maternal. But it's not. It's meiosis. Homologous chromosomes will pair with one another. The maternal and paternal chromatids become very closely aligned with one another. When in this complex, the chromatids are said to be in synapsis. As meiosis proceeds, this synaptic complex resolves again into distinct chromatids or chromosomes. As the synaptic complex expands, we can see the presence of chiasmata, points where the chromosomes cross over each other. Chiasmata appear to be sites where chromatids were broken and then rejoined. We can move the mouse over and see what the outcomes are. This is a crossing over point between two chromosomes. You can see the parts that have been exchanged between them. This crossover occurs between replicated maternal chromatids. As an isolated event, it would have little, if any, obvious effect because it doesn't change the chromosomes. This point leads to an exchange between homologous chromatin chromosomes. We've illustrated only single events, but multiple crossovers can occur within a single synaptic complex. Now let's look at the effects of various kinds of crossing over events. This is a crossover that occurs between two strands, one maternal, one paternal. It generates two unaltered chromosomes and two altered chromosomes. These two positions indicate three-strand crossovers, that is, three different chromosomes are involved. We can see again that we've shuffled parts of each chromosome. And these are places of four-strand chromosome events. Again, more shuffling. One advantage of recombination is that it can be used to exchange alleles to generate chromosomes with new patterns of alleles, new versions of genes in different combinations. This can be very useful to remove deleterious alleles from a population. Here's an example of a maternal chromosome and a paternal chromosome with the bad alleles shown in the X's. If the chromosomes recombine, it's possible with a few crossing over events to generate two new chromosomes, one containing all the bad alleles, the other containing none of them. An organism inheriting the bad allele chromosome is unlikely to survive. These alleles will be lost. Here are two questions to ponder. If recombination did not occur, how would bad alleles be removed from the population? And how would new combinations of alleles be created?